Hello, Lindsay and Bagel. Hello, Moby. Bagel, do you want to say hi? Hi, Moby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did a good job. Okay, so a few months ago, Lindsay and I tried something sort of unprecedented that we hadn't done before, which is we wrote a song from scratch. And it was daunting because who knew, maybe it would have been terrible, but it actually ended up not being terrible. And we really enjoyed writing this song from scratch. And based on the feedback we got, it seems like people really enjoyed listening to the creation of the song. So with that in mind, a couple months has passed. We're going to do it again. We're going to write a song from scratch, but this time it's going to be 100% based on your feedback. We're sort of going to go randomly into the email grab bag and pick an email. And based on that email, we're going to write a song in whatever genre is suggested to us. Yes, we got a lot of responses and a lot of people asking for very similar things. So let me do a little email grab baggy. I'm going to do a little like swirly cue with this mouse and I'm going to find one. Okay, are you ready? I'm not even looking. Okay. I'm just going to look at you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got one. Are you ready? Yep. It's from our friend Brandon. Oh, in Portland. Mm -hmm. Brando. Yep. And he said, of course, it's got to be country since Lindsay's from Texas and there should be slide guitar. Okay. Uh, country. <laughs> so I don't know country music very well. You are from Texas. Am I, I don't want to be presumptuous, but am I correct in assuming that country music might sort of be in your cultural DNA? Oh, yeah. Like you you scratch one layer and there's just a rootin' tootin' cowgirl <laughs> under there. <laughs> okay, so then we're, so we're going to write a country song. Yeah. Okay, so a few years ago, I was talking to a mutual friend of ours who's also from Texas. Mm -hmm. And I was saying like the only country that I knew was like really old timey, like classic country. And... This was adorable. She said, oh, you mean like the Dixie Chicks or Garth Brooks? Wow. And I was like, well, no, I kind of mean like Buck Owens or Hank William, like yeah, yeah. country from the 50s. So I think the last country song I listened to was off of Hank Williams' greatest hits circa 1950-something. But that's the classics, man. That's a good piece of knowledge to have because it's that's the roots. So if we start with that, but again, like you're, you're young and country is in your DNA. So like- It is, I guess. Maybe, up on you, Garth Brooks. maybe you can help us steer the country song. I mean, I, I just, all I know is like a few Hank Williams songs, some Buck Owen songs, maybe some Charlie Pride, uh, maybe some Merle Haggard. Oh, and Chris Christopherson. So mm -hmm. that's my country reference. Well, there's so many genres of country, especially now. Like there's like alternative country. There's Texas country. You've there's more you've like confused me. Appalachian style, more honky tonk style. And then there's like a very progressive -y style. There's so many genres of country. So lyrically, you're going to be the one most likely coming up with the lyrics. Yeah, well, I see I, there's two things. Well, there's three things I know how to do well in my life. One is fall in love. The other one is be heartbroken. And the third one is just having a lot of joy about cars and grass. And by the way, when you say grass, I think you're talking about actual, like, lawn grass. Yeah, lawn grass. You know, the simple things in life. Yeah. You know, like by ketchup the way, stains and baby laughs and shit like that. You know what I mean? But I think that <laughs> what you just said, there are two things that can be like, there, there are three things I'm good at, falling in love and getting a broken heart. Like, oh, that's yeah. A, that's a pretty great start. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go get the guitar and I'm going to start playing what I think of as country. And you can tell me if it's too old timey or not. Okay, well, maybe maybe I'll pull up some examples. We don't have to play them on the podcast, but like so you can hear kind of it's because it's very, very simple. It's okay, well, I'm, I'm going to get the guitar and I'm going to start playing and you can I don't want to I almost don't want to hear examples. I'd rather you tell me examples. Okay, I'm not good at music language, though. I mean, it'll, it'll be as simple as faster, slower. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because uh, I feel like you're going to go like, dong, so dong, 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 like that. Why don't I get the guitar hurt okay. and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Here's what I think of when I think of country. Okay. Is that way too old timey? That's like it's very old timey. It's like campfire. So the traditional in, in country, the one here's one thing I sort of know is it's usually based around a very similar chord progression. Mm -hmm. In this case, it'd be like 
we could start with G. We go up to C. That's my, like, if you held a gun to my head and said, play country, that's what I would play. Does, does that sound like country? Well, it's a version of country, but the thing is, there's just so many. There's just so many. Well, we have to pick one. Versions. I guess more like fast would be like. That sounds like country. But I, I like, I want it to be a little, like, sort of slowish and a little bit, like, a little bit melancholy. Like, I don't want us to be, like... Yeah, that's a song about somebody named, like, like, Porch Soup Sally. Yeah, good old Porch Soup Sally. <laughs> porch Soup Sally going around the yeah. bar now, see him out over here. <laughs> Hey, I port soup salad in the ring, 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 ring. Everybody knows that port soup salad. She's a crazy, crazy little little port soup salad. <laughs> <laughs> so I think going a little more melon, like just like sweet. Like. Yeah. A tender little country song about pretty ladies and and catch up. <laughs> well, I really like that idea of like, like there are two things I'm good at, falling in love and getting my heart broken. I also really love that. But what I also, let me just say this. I feel like I've never heard a, a, a country song about vegan delights. Yeah. Like... Like singing about tofu pups with my best girl, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Or so is that here's, two on the nose for us? For, uh. No, I love the idea of a, a vegan country western song. But I also love the idea of trying to do something that's a little earnest. That's a little okay. sweet. Uh, earnest is rarely my go-to, but I can yeah. get there. I can do that. So, so, so here's my suggestion. Okay, we start okay. with this chord. And then, so one thing, if we're going, the next obvious chord is to go either here. Ooh. Whoa. We could go to a slightly unconventional, but still very pretty A minor seventh chord. What do you think? I love it. I love it so much. Is it country? Is that, I mean, is I it sort of like co country folk? I mean, maybe the country just comes from the lyrics and vocals. Okay. I mean, I think of like... Because that is country, but it's it's a more like... It's a kind of like laid back, maybe poppier ballady country. And that's great. I think that's great. I say this having very little familiarity with anything other than like listening to Garth Brooks in the backseat of my parents' car. So... You know, for all the country music lovers out there, I'm sorry I'm not doing us justice. Wait, I'm gonna, I, I, I mean, I love that. To me, this is so beautiful. Because also, so what we're going to do is we're also going to add a slide guitar part. How does that work? Okay, so the song we just did was in G. Love we that. could also have it be an E, do a very similar thing where it's like. Mm. That's very pretty. 
Okay, so then slide would be, I'm, and I'm, and I'm gonna, we're gonna have to fake it because real country slide is pedal steel slide, which I don't know how to play. That's a complicated holder instrument. So here, let me. Is pedal slide kind of like um, uh, what is the instrument in churches? Big horn horn piano. Organ. Organ. Yeah. <laughs> Big horn piano. <laughs> um, is a pedal steel like uh, an organ? Like in the way it functions with the way you play the pedals? Is that how it works? Uh, I don't know because I've never played pedal steel. Oh, All I know is it's complicated. But so like. So what I did is I just tuned up one of the strings so it's a chord. So I've got like the E on my low E. And then the upper three strings are G sharp, B, and E, which makes it an E major. But then you slide. And A. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it sounds so cool. It's like you're a magician. I say this every time we do this, but damn, I, the things that you're able to do musically continually shock me. Um, so when I first moved to L.A., did I ever tell you the story about David Lynch and the slide guitar? I'm not sure. Okay, so I moved to L.A. and I got invited to have Christmas at David Lynch's house because we had become friends. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, what a wonderful way to be introduced Pretty to Los cool. Angeles, yeah. like having Christmas at David Lynch's house. And I was like, you know what? If I'm having Christmas with David Lynch at David Lynch's house, I have to get him a great present. And David is obsessed with guitars. He loves guitars, but he doesn't know how to play guitar. So I went to a music store in Santa Monica, and I bought what's called a Hawaiian guitar. And a Hawaiian guitar is like a regular guitar, but smaller, and you only play it with a slide. So you don't, anybody can play them. That's what some no notes that you were playing toward the high end sounded very Hawaiian. Yeah, so Hawaiian guitars are just slide guitars. And I gave him this guitar, and boy, oh boy, was it worth it because <laughs> it was this beautiful vintage, like probably from like the 50s or 60s, like Hawaiian slide guitar. And his eyes lit up and mm. he was so taken. He was like, oh, my. And then a, a few months later, uh, some magazine did a profile of him. And in all the photos, he's playing his Hawaiian slide guitar that I gave him. Oh, my God. That's amazing. It was very sweet. So, yeah. So um, and then I, well, I tuned back down to normal because now it would be minor. Scary and slide. <laughs> Emotional, what's gonna happen? That's yeah. fun. And I don't that that's definitely not country. Country is sweet and pretty. And we want to go we want to stay sweet and pretty. Yeah, we want to stay sweet and pretty. We're talking about we're talking about lo falling in love and heartbreak. We're really smashing two together. And maybe I'll even talk about the simple things. And maybe we'll just do a country song that talks about everything country songs talk about. So tempo-wise, we can go very sweet and slow, which is like like a tiny bit faster than that. Yeah. Yeah. That Does that feel good to you when you play that like that? Because that feels like it really moves a little bit, but not too fast. It's still thoughtful. It's still... You can, you can kind of chew on it. Okay, so that's... So the tempo will be roughly that. I like that a lot. And I, there was this one folk singer I loved, 
And he did this really pretty chord thing that I kind of want to borrow yeah, slash yeah. steal. But it's maybe more folky. So it's this, okay. tell me what you think. If I can, tell me if I should include this little, okay, I'll just play it. So you're playing G. Or is that too Bob Dylan-y, like too folky? It's, a, it's folky for sure, but it's also really beautiful. I don't know. I really like it, even though it is folky. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Or rather, I'm sorry, I'm not be trying to be all pedantic and controlling. Here's what I suggest. <laughs> okay. Is I, this evening, work on the music. Okay. And then tomorrow, I'll play you what I've come up with. Okay. And maybe tonight as well, you could sketch out some lyric ideas. I've got some stuff swirling in the old noodle. The old brain pan? Yeah, my brain pan's swirling. Okay, so tonight I'm going to take these three slash four simple chords... And I'll make something that is my approximation of country. And you can tell me, oh, that's more folk. That's more rock. It doesn't need to, we'll figure it out. Okay. So I won't get too attached to what I do tonight. And I'll play you my rough country demo tomorrow. And you can maybe share some lyrics. Okay, great. I'm excited about it. Okay, great. Okay, so day two of country western song making from scratch. I, last night, tried to take what we discussed and turn it into the beginnings of a song. Okay, Um, And I believe, based on what you've told me, that you also, you wrote lyrics. Well, some. Here's what I did. I, I wrote the beginnings of lyrics because I wasn't really sure which direction to take. I have a favorite, but we do have options. Okay, uh, with Bagel <laughs> squeaking in the background. It's worth it. Please yeah. bear with us because the joy she's getting from this right now is just oh, I, beyond. Yeah, there's no way I would even consider trying to edit this out. It's, or take the ball away. We just yeah. can't. That sound is just Bagel completely focused and happy. Mm-hmm. That's the sound of anxiety leaving a tiny blog body. <laughs> so, okay, so can I play you the music I came up with? Yeah. And also just, I just want to qualify it a little bit. I, as I mentioned yesterday, don't really understand country. I did, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but last night I went onto the Spotify machine and I listened. Wow, she's really I'm really squeaking. going for it. <laughs> um, I listened to some old country. Okay. Like Merle Haggard, Dolly Parton, um, Buck. That up, there was know. a playlist on Spotify that was tons of old country. And I went and listened to it just to sort of get a sense of like, what what am I working with here? Because yeah. But I don't know if I've if I've come up with something that a country person would consider country or if I've gone more in a sort of rock direction, but I'll play it for you. Country can be rocky. Okay. So this is my what I came up with yesterday. And the reason I'm being all sort of mealy-mouthed and wishy-washy about it is <laughs> if you don't, given that you're from Texas and you grew up with country, if it doesn't resonate with you, I can go back and try and rewrite it. Country's a little loose these days, man. You can kind of let your freak flag fly. Okay. Well, let me... Okay. So then let me play you what I came up with. Okay. Okay, here we go. And I can play you individual parts, make it quieter, louder. Okay. So you'll notice... Ooh. You'll notice there's some slide guitar. Oh, slip sliding away. (laughs) Um, The slide guitar is... Very good and fun. Thank you. Now that we've, I I really hear the like tropical Hawaiian and the slide guitar now that we talked about it the other day, yesterday. So, so that was the chorus. Here's the verse with a little quieter slide guitar. This is verse. Yep. And I've also, I added a little gospel organ here. If you hear that. Um, and then there's a bass. Um, and then here's, so I added a little middle, a pre-chorus. You ready? Here's the pre-chorus. Okay. Just 
little like, where's it going? Okay. And now we're back to the chorus. Also, I did something a little weird. I added this weird piano. Can I play the, the weird piano? It's oh, a yeah. player piano. Ooh. Like an old-timey saloon. I love it. Hey, we're in an old-timey saloon playing poker with the Clancy boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's my... Does the, I mean... I love this. I love this. My only, my only question would be if we wanted to make it a tiny click faster... Do we have the ability to do that? Uh, I would have to go back and rewrite it. Oh, then let's keep it the tempo that it is. Because I I just didn't know how that works. Um, I think it's great. I love it. I think all of the instruments are great. I think the slide guitar sounds great. I love Tiny Saloon Piano. It's so good. Um, I love this. I love it. With the Tiny Saloon Piano. Um, here, let me just... I'm just going to mute the drums and the organ and the non-fun stuff. So we just have saloon piano and slide guitar. That's ridiculous, right? It sounds like the last two people that are up and drunk and they're in a bar and they're like, I don't know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, might as well keep drinking because otherwise yeah. it's got to wake up at some point. So... Deal the blackjack cards and it's blackjack cards? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. Okay, well, great. So, I love it. Actually, like, deeply love. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Thank you. So let's um, now take a look or listen to your lyrics. Okay. Your music is so much better than my lyrics. Mm. I feel like I need to do a little bit of more work on my lyrics. But I just, I mostly just wanted to have something on paper so that we could talk about which direction I'm going to go in. Great. So I got my guitar out so we can sort of play. So here's... This isn't what I just played you, but this is sort of, so it's sort of like. This is the chorus. This is verse. The chorus and verse are the same. Oh. So what we got here, so. Hands out the window Yeah Of your faded navy truck I'm sweating like a cold beer I don't drink but I'm drunk I don't like this pre-chorus I, I decided Well we haven't gotten to the So we're still in the verses Oh so should I repeat this So there should be two But maybe it could be you I sort of like this simplicity So I've got this second idea of yours Which is a simple life Not much to do. Just finding love. And losing it, too. That's nice. Yeah, that, that is nice. And then, so you had written as a pre-chorus, I'm on fire. I can't decipher. <laughs> I don't know if we need the decipher. I mean, it's kind decipher of decipher is not a great word, but basically, I just wanted it to. The first idea that I have is kind of about a struggle with anxious avoidant relationships, and then the second one is kind of more about someone who is kind of always falling in and out of love. Um, and then the last one is kind of a, a gambling metaphor. <laughs> well, so I, for what it's worth, I'm really liking what we just like that, that the simple, the simple lyrics, mm, the simple life. Not much to do. 
or is this too minimal? Just finding love and losing it too. It's pretty. Well, I'm just good at a few little things. Falling in love, flying in grief. There are no more words, <laughs> but which might be good words. <laughs> Grass and ladies, <laughs> ketchup and cups. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I mean, I personally, I think that feels pretty nice. What do you think? Yeah, but, okay, like now it. let's try the, those earlier lyrics. Hands out the window of your faded truck. I'm sweating like a cold beer. I don't drink, but I'm drunk. You got the, I just did the same, oh, I just, the same just lyrics trying to build it, yeah. repeated. Can we try the chorus with those words? I wonder if that sounds okay. You think it's too many words? Well, there's one thing you said yesterday that I really liked, which was that I'm only good at two things. You said I'm only good at three things. You said like falling in love, getting my heart broken and eating snacks. So maybe we narrow it down to two things. Well, the, the second one kind of does that. But I like that as a personally as a literal line. Something about like, you know, I'm only good at two things. One is falling in love. And the other is getting my heart broken. Something like that. Obviously, that's lyrically a little awkward. Well, I tried to say that with the, I'm just good at two things, falling in love and flying in grief. Flying in grief is pretty. Well, I was just trying to find what's the opposite of falling yeah. into love. And so I just kind of did a little flipsy do. A verbal flipsy do. But I can still keep th keep thinking about that because if we like this kind of um, structure, I can just keep going on this and give us a bunch of options to choose from. Okay. And we can um, we can just find the ones that work best. And I'll just make a smattering and follow this kind of... Thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm just good. Add a few little things. Falling in love. By the way, flying in grief, if we end up with flying in grief, I think that's a really nice poetic, good, strong lyric. I think, I just think something that's a little more oomph, like that has like a little like emotional knife twist to it. But this pain has wings? No, because... Hmm, you said you wanted something that rhymes with things. I know. Or, or but I mean, because grief sort of feels like it doesn't rhyme with things, but it does have a similar... Yeah, it has grief. the E. I'm just good at a few little things, falling in love... And uh, saying no to beef. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and I wish, I mean, it's like, and breaking my heartstrings and, you know. And the way love stings. That's not bad. Yeah. But it's a, I just, it I don't It doesn't really make sense. Um, but I think you're in the right direction. I'm going to, um, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm not trying to bully us into this direction. I just really, when you said that yesterday, like I'm only good at two things. Well, I'm excluding snacks. Uh, <laughs> the falling in love and getting my heart broken. I just really like that. But do you want? We don't have to. We can go in any direction. No, I'm, I like it. I think. I think also something you're leaning toward is like the simpler lyric because the other lyrics, like if you look at the chorus here, it's the, pretty complicated. It's, it's a lot of words. And but I let me. Feel like but let's should I try it out just sure, to. Sure. It's your far away gaze. Indecipherable face. Indecipherable is a very awkward word to sing. I can't tell what's down or up. Tender mistakes. 
a cold embrace you're miles away but i'm stuck i mean that's if we lost indecipherable f- indecipherable is really a tough there's, one because the other stuff can actually be done quite simply and nice because i kind of the the other one um of finding love and uh, you know, falling in love. It feels more general, but this one is about a person. But maybe I could combine them somehow. I mean, that... So, here, do you want to try singing it? Okay, so yes. which note... Okay, here's a, a starting note could be this. The far away gaze. The far away gaze. The far away gaze. I can't tell what's down or up. A tender mistake. Something like that. Yeah, your voice is great. Cold embrace. Mm-hmm. You're miles away. But that feels like it's very repetitive. Should it go up from there? I you like that? I think I I love this. I think the sentiment there is quite like there's something about faraway gaze. I think is pretty tender. Mistakes is pretty cold embrace. I love you're miles away, but I'm lo- I like your miles away. I'm not in love with I'm love struck and love I'm struck not, is an awkward. I'm word. not in love with I can't tell what's down or up. So this can change. So okay, I'm gonna leave you. To figure out lyrically what you want to do. Will that be the same? Sound the same as the chorus? Yeah. So it's basically the verse is quiet G D C. Okay. And then the chorus is louder G D C. So maybe it's just like an octave change or something. Well, in vocally, the vocally, there's a. I wouldn't worry about it. We can. There's so many things we can do. Like the player piano only comes in in the choruses. Mm. There's a guitar part that only comes in the choruses. So there's lots of ways to build the chorus that doesn't involve like even changing melodies. You can just add harmony lines. You can add orchestration. I've got symbols in the chorus that aren't in the. Okay. Stuff that you wouldn't even necessarily, you wouldn't notice. But that's where, like, I think I've mentioned this before, like the Neil Young approach to songwriting is the choruses are the exact same as the verses, just with some different stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. I've got so many ideas now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'm going to I'm gonna go hit stop on the Pro Tools. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and then I'll export the music for you so you can write to it. Okay, great. Okay, so we're back again, and Lindsay, yesterday after you left, I tried out your lyrics, and I sang them over the rough version of the song, and added some sort of a vocal melody and phrasing, and what I'd really like to do is at some point record you singing. Okay. But first, do you want to hear the sort of vocal melody phrasing approach I did? I, yeah, I would love that. Okay, here, so I will start playing the music. Spart playing. Spart, I'll spart playing the music. And pretty soon you will hear my vocal idea come in. I'm feeling a little embarrassed, but hopefully it's okay. No, I'm very excited. Okay, well, just to state the obvious, so that's music that's playing. I love it. Uh, and here comes... Ooh, testing that, Mikey. Here here comes some vocals. Simple life. <gasps> Country boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not much to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's me singing some words just that you wrote. In love. Losing it too. Made it kind of austere and sad. Oh, I like and here's it. Here's like the little middle eight that is right now not really doing much of anything, just me mumbling, blah, blah, blah. But then we come to the chorus. I'm just good. Oh! 
Doing two things. That little uh, piano, the kind of like the honky tonk piano, twangy honky piano is so good. When I was a young one, I only learned two things to get high on love and the pain it brings. You want to go back to the verse? I wonder why. Little love and leave. What do we think so far? I'm so obsessed with it, I could die. Okay. Um, there goes my pride. And what do we say? I mean, lyrically, it's obviously pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. I do have a couple of ideas. That Here's are the middle eight that doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Bum, mumbly, 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 nothing. Yeah. No, I like, I like yearn. The word yeah. yearn, I really love. Good. Doing two things, falling in love. Ooh, it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think that ever since I was a young one, I only learned two things to get high on love and the pain it brings. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> well, I'm just good. <laughs> Doing two things that's fallen in love and flying in grief. Ever since I was a young one, I only learned two things to get high on love and the pain it brings. Okay, so now the music has stopped, the vocal idea has stopped, and let's discuss. First of all, I love it. I love what you did musically and with the phrasing. I think it's so fun. Um, so I love it. There's just a few little things, like tiny tweaks I would change. Okay. So in the chorus, we say things in love twice. So I was thinking we can get away with saying love twice, but I don't think things is necessarily our strongest word to use two times. So I was thinking for the second part of the chorus to say since I was young, longed for the sting, getting high on love and the pain it brings. Doesn't that feel nice? Okay, so what, what, what's, the, what's the first chorus again? I don't quite remember. The first one is, I'm just good at doing two things, falling in love, falling in grief. Since I was young, longed for the sting, getting high on love and the pain it brings. Okay, great. <gasps> Doesn't that feel fun? I just yeah. feel like it changes things is hard to say two times. Um, yeah, it felt weird, but it also, I think that there can be a degree of creative license. Like if, even though saying things twice is a little awkward, if that's what feels right, then we can do that. Yeah, I just, I love the word stings. Yeah. And I feel like it has a place in there. Uh, Like long for the sting. Like, I just feel like yeah. that feels a little Great. more like emotionally narrative. And then for the middle eight, I thought maybe just just saying this heart, it yearns slowly and easily throughout that middle eight section. Yeah. Because we don't say heart or yearns throughout. And I feel like the song really needs the word heart and the word yearns. So let's just get those little suckers in there at the last minute sneak it in and that's all everything else i think is so wonderful okay so one question i have is a little more general okay okay because originally i said like i don't have history with country music yeah and my assumption is you do because you were you know you grew up in texas you grew up in georgia like yeah so, i've got so, a lot of country going on in, yeah. the, in the background um i mean you actually have family members who voted for trump like i feel like multiple yeah <laughs> And then I grew up in Connecticut, you know, born in New York, grew up in Connecticut. But I actually have a weird history with country of my own. Okay. More recently, I, I did a song on, on the album um, Reprise with Chris Christopherson. Mm -hmm. And the way I met Chris Christopherson was about, I guess, 15 years ago, I was playing a fundraiser for the Institute of Music and Neurologic Function, and he agreed to be a guest, which I thought was very generous of him because mm -hmm. I'd never actually met him. And we played some songs together, 
And we played me and Bobby McGee, the famous song that Janis Joplin recorded that he wrote. I didn't know he wrote that song. Yeah. It was one of those amazing moments. I was like, wow, I've sung Heroes with David Bowie. I've sung Walk on the Wild Side with Lou Reed. And now I've sung me and Bobby McGee with Chris Christopherson. Crazy. So that's my more recent self-involved slight country history. Although most people know Chris Christopherson because he was in the Blade movies. What was he in Blade movies? I think he was like, like Wesley Snipes' handler. Whoa, cool. But in any case, I remembered when I was growing up, my mom dated a pedal steel guitar player. Whoa. And so he played in a country band. And I don't know if this was good parenting or not, but my mom would, we would drive all around New England going to bars, honky tonk bars, when I was like six or seven years old to see her boyfriend play pedal steel with this country western band. Eventually he stole a bunch of stuff from her and moved out, but he left his records. And so I got to, I grew up listening to his records. But one of the sad parts was, and I thought this was normal. I remember in therapy, I was telling my therapist this, that like we'd be in a bar somewhere in New England, some honky tonk bar, and it would start to get late. And my mom, I would be like, oh, mom, I'm tired. And she'd be like, oh, okay, here are the car keys. And I would go sleep in the car. (gasps) And I thought this was the most normal thing in the world. Like, oh, kid's tired. He goes to sleep in the car in the parking lot at some dive bar in New England. Turns out that's maybe not normal. I um I can see how today that CPS would be called pretty quickly <laughs> on a child sleeping in a car outside of a bar. Because the mom is in the bar drinking beer while her vaguely homeless pedal steel guitar playing boyfriend plays Johnny Cash covers. I mean, yeah, it's a little weird. Okay. It's a little, it's not normal. Okay. So maybe you have negative feelings about country music because... No, I actually like country music. I like old school country music. Like, Because I thought, and maybe we're really going down a rabbit hole that has nothing to do with this song. When I was growing up, my criteria for evaluating well-being was simply, was my mom happy or angry? Mm. You know, so as long as she was happy, I felt okay. And so if I was going to sleep in a car in a parking lot of a dive bar when I was six years old, my mom was happy. So I was like, oh, I guess this is okay. Whoa. As opposed to if she was making cereal and she was angry, like that was bad. Yeah. So cereal for breakfast, bad. Cereal for breakfast, good. Cereal for breakfast served by an angry person smoking cigarettes, bad. Yeah, that's bad. But like, you know, a happy drunk mom saying, yeah, sure, here are the keys, go sleep in the car in the winter. You know, hindsight, I was like, yeah, maybe Child Protective Services would have a dim view of that. (laughs) But I thought it was fine because she was happy. So I just would go sleep in the car. And also it's like we do what our parents tell us to do. And we're like, oh, well, they're the adult. So they know. They know what's right and wrong. Clearly, they're the grown up. Uh, and turns now, out that's not always true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in hindsight, expecting like a 26-year-old person to be that much of a grown-up is maybe, I mean, they're, they're, a 26-year-old is a child. Yeah, a 26-year-old is a child. I feel like, I think there's a way that parents are a little more hovery than they used to be, a little more conscious. And sometimes I think that's bad. But when you tell me stories like that, I think it's really good. <laughs> I well, mean, considering that's the alternative. It is amazing. Now we're really going down a complete weird tangential rabbit hole. How like I was growing up in the 70s and everything we did was horrible and unsafe. Like cars didn't have seatbelts. Parents drove high and drunk and smoking cigarettes all the time. All the food we ate was just garbage. And bike helmets didn't even exist. Like so you would be like six years old riding your bike for miles at dark in a snowstorm, like getting sleeted on with no helmet. How did any of us survive? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's also a case I was just reading something about. I think the Atlantic put something out about how kids used to learn that way. Kids used to be able, not from like the lack of safety measures, like obviously we should have seatbelts and helmets. But, you know, I think that no child goes out without supervision anymore. It's very rare that they are able to explore by themselves with like a sense of individuality. It does seem like when, when, at least when I, and again, I don't know if this was the case when you were growing up, but when I was growing up, we just left the house. Like on a Saturday, you'd leave the house at nine in the morning you come home at nine at night when you were seven years old. And you would explore, like you'd find abandoned buildings or you'd break into the school or... Or you'd go dig a hole. Yeah. You know, sometimes we just go dig a hole. You'd just go set things on fire. You'd, yeah. like everything was... <laughs> 
<gasps> and there were, but this was just normal. There was never that question. Like you, you know, you go nine, find snacks at somebody's house. Their parents yeah. gives you a snack. You go back out. You go back wherever you need to go. And yeah. I, I don't know if that exists anymore. And I, like, do, are kids still allowed to ride their bikes to abandoned houses and go exploring? I. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's less common than it once hmm. was. Okay. I'll just say that. Well, I'm glad that I survived. Me too. But I'm glad that I grew up at a time when you could just get on your bike with your friends and ride for three miles when you're seven years old to discover an abandoned house. Mm-hmm. So it was so much fun. Yeah. So, okay. That is a profoundly long tangent. But how about <laughs> uh, we will now record your vocals. My and vox. Your vox. And we will, because uh, it might take a minute. And so I've, my thought is, if you want, we could document the process of you recording your vocals. But it might be easier and more comfortable for you if we just record your vocals and then play people your finished vocals. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. It's like, you know, they don't need to hear the recording of the recording. They'll, they'll hear the recording. Okay, so we'll use my vocal as a guide vocal and we'll record your vocals and we'll be back in one second with your finished vocals. Great. So... We recorded your vocals, and then I took your vocals, and last night, while you and Bagel were out being social, Mm -hmm. I stayed home as I like to do, and I I think I finished the song. Okay. So I, I arranged everything, and I did what I think is a finished mix. Like, I'm not a great mixer, so someone else could definitely make it better, but I think I've got it to the point where it's a listenable finished mix. Okay. And the only thing, so at the very end for drama, you'll hear I added some orchestral parts, which seemed a little weird because like it's country western. Like you don't normally think of orchestral elements in a country western song. I wouldn't say that I don't. Oh. I mean, not that I've heard it necessarily, but it sounds like a nice thing. It just, I think towards the end of the song, it gives it like an emotional lift when all of a sudden there's this new sonic element that comes in. Amazing. I think that's so exciting. Okay. So as we did last time, should we just play it without talking and just listen? And so like our friends who are listening can listen as well. Yes. And then when it's done, you can tell me what you think. If I did an okay job arranging it and everything. What do you think about it? I really like it. Really? It's so catchy. Like last night as I was lying in bed battling my crippling insomnia it's very catchy like the chorus i just couldn't get the chorus out of my head really yeah like earworm chorus that's great it's very exciting yeah okay so (gasps) enough enough my yapping enough my yapping let me uh play you what i think of is we'll call it like a finished mix that someone else could finish better but i think for the purposes of our listening and playing it for other people it's it's pretty good okay great
song it sounds really good i love the orchestral part at the end too and you made my voice sound like a real voice <laughs> <laughs> well so not to make you feel uncomfortable oh god but your country western voice is great like <gasps> like everyone just heard how good it is okay so originally i thought okay we'll both sing on it like you'll we'll have a duet I'll maybe do some harmony parts, mm -hmm. et cetera. But then I was working on it yesterday and I was like, wow, your country voice. I mean, your voice is great, but like 